The Canadian Space Agency is actually gonna come today and feed us the food that astronauts are eating in space right now. There are countless movies about the heroism and excitement of being an astronaut. These movies focus on adventure, risk taking, and what happens when things go wrong. Though these high stakes scenarios are exciting, they ignore the fascinating day to day experiences of astronauts that are realistic, but also incredible. Today, we are going to show you exactly what astronauts are eating in space right now in order to stay alive and stay sane. So we are here with Natalie from the Canadian Space Agency. What are we what are we going to be doing here? NASA has a standard menu that they provide on the space station. So today you're going to be trying a collection of American and Canadian foods. Okay. We're going to actually blindfold you so that you okay. can taste the space food and guess what you're eating. I assume it will be nutritious. <laughs> yeah. It feels like plastic. I don't want to put this it's in It's actually mouth. dehydrated. Okay. So that might explain the texture. So interesting thing, in space, people have a difficult time smelling when they first get into space because all the fluid shifts towards uh, their head because oh. they're not exposed to gravity. They would really struggle to smell things mm. and to taste things, especially in the first few weeks. I'm thinking like broccoli, spinach. It's oh. red? Red pepper? Red pepper. What we look for when we're looking for space food is that there's no fridge or freezer on space station. Mm -hmm. So we need products mm -hmm. like that long no. shelf lives. Mm -hmm. Is it actually curry? It tastes like curry. Yes, it's curry. <laughs> is yep. it beef? Oh, it literally is. It's not beef. Chicken? Yes. It's chicken. <laughs> and mm -hmm. there might be like a nutty flavor in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting like I literally cashews just or something. I love it. <laughs> cashew, is yes. It? Yeah. So it's a chicken cashew curry. Wow. Woo. How long on average are they in space? Like, Usually for six months at a time. Okay, so it's nice to have like a variety yes. of meals, otherwise you'd go like kind of yeah. a little crazy, right? And that's one of the so reasons good. why we have a lot of variety on orbit is so that mm -hmm. people don't get bored. So there's the psychological side of things, but then there's also the Just physiological eating. side mm -hmm. of things. So we um, designed the menu so that there's three meals a day and a snack. And we kind of um, plan for like an eight day menu cycle. If there's three meals a day, how long do astronauts usually sleep? So they are scheduled for like an eight hour sleep period. Okay. They don't necessarily sleep that period of time. Right, but, but it's like booked but in the schedule for We do try to keep track of their work schedule as much as possible because mm -hmm. we don't want them to overwork, yeah. right. especially for a six But condition. they gotta do some work, I mean, yes. <laughs> taxpayers' dollars, you know? But usually the problem is not that they don't do enough work. Yeah, it's right. they don't overwork, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wet. Oh my God, it tastes like a hot dog. Oh. Okay, shrimp! It's shrimp! <laughs> it's shrimp! I didn't even put it in my mouth yet, yeah, Greg. It's, it's shrimp, shrimp, right? Shrimp cocktail. Yes! <laughs> this is one of the most popular dishes on yeah, Space Station. Yeah, it's good. And yeah. so the reason that this is so popular is because it's spicy. When astronauts have a head with fluid shift and they feel like they have this head cold, something oh, like this nice. has got a lot of spice mm -hmm. and flavor. So on Space Station, there's a water dispenser that dispenses warm and cool oh, nice. water. Okay. It flies dehydrated oh. and then- You add water? And they're ready to oh. eat it. <laughs> warm, rehydrated yeah, shrimp sure. are cold. Yeah. A Capri Sun. <laughs> May I suck so, the straw? <laughs> yes. So this is a space straw, and it actually has a lock on it, so that when you're in space, so the drink oh, doesn't come no gravity? floating okay. out. But if Clever. it's been locked for a while, it sometimes gets a bit sticky. Also, okay. I feel okay. Velcro. Is okay. that because you gotta stick it to a wall? That's right. So you don't want to have your food floating all over the space <laughs> station. That just tastes like every fruit in one. <laughs> I think it's well, raspberry. Actually, I can give you a hint. Okay. It's two fruits. Like maybe. me and you, Mitch. Two fruits. <laughs> Let's see here. Peach, okay. apricot. <laughs> I love how this is just so space looking. <laughs> Juice box, but then you're like, oh yeah, no, it's a space version. <laughs> Tortilla, yeah, in the bottom part of the tortilla. Yes, so when you think about hors d'oeuvres, what kind of seafood would you sometimes Oh, crab! <laughs> it's crab! But it's crab that's brown. It's like a crab pate. Exactly! Uh, uh, is there any refrigeration in space? There's a very small refrigerator that they can okay. use for condiments. What about like but once you open this pate, no, or would you, you just would, finish it? No, you would it? want to you finish the it pate. All. So sometimes crews will get together for to celebrate special occasions, just like we do on the ground. For David St. Jacques, he's gonna be in space during Christmas. Mm -hmm. And also during New Year, so their crew would usually get together yeah. and have like yeah. a big oh, celebratory really cute. meal. Yeah. This you can just pick up <laughs> and eat. Oh, the famous maple cookie! <laughs> How are you so fast, Greg? <laughs> For anyone who is not Canadian, if you haven't tasted this, you haven't lived. I don't know that I've had this before. <laughs> what? Tuna? Is it? No. no. Oh. 
It okay. has a texture of tuna falling apart. But it tastes like meat. Yeah. Okay, so this is a Canadian product. It's oh. a hint. Beaver! Moose! Salmon. Yes! Oh, really? And it has maybe a bit of a hint of something sweet. Maple syrup! Yes! Do the space agencies just all work together? I think that's one of the main benefits of the International Space Station is just mm. the international collaboration. Right. Сейчас я говорю по-русски, поэтому нужно говорить по-русски. Но, вы знаете, я не говорю по-русски, я говорю по союзу. Russia and America. Yeah, and Canada. then we have Europe and Japan as well. And when you speak to astronauts, especially when they come back from space, they say when you look at the Earth, you don't see yeah, any borders. Yeah, any borders. Imagine the perspective you must have. You yeah. know what's interesting is that David St. Jacques' mission is called Perspective. So oh, wow. Enjoy. So, Greg. This yes. is a special treat for you. Oh! <laughs> this is Greg's drug for sure. It's coffee! <laughs> it's it's like really literally genuine. a metaphor for my life. I'm like, <laughs> tastes yeah. like a Tim Horton yeah. like double double or no, something. Good. Also, the, the water is so essential. When David St. Jack goes up, they'll be going up with water. So actually, when he flies in his rocket, it's just to bring the crew up, and there's okay. a very small amount of room in that vehicle for other things. Okay. Um, and then they have other vehicles that will go to space that just take it just like, supplies. But someone's in it. No, no. it's not. What? It's unmanned. Whoa. What? So there's a Russian vehicle that's unmanned called the Progress. And then the Americans are now flying commercial vehicles. So there's uh, two companies that are flying commercial vehicles. Is it Elon Musk? One of them, yes. Yeah, ah! How does it dock? <laughs> it has. So that's a good question. And depending on <laughs> on the vehicle, sometimes they'll use the Canada arm to dock. Oh. The Canada arm. I don't know if you guys know about that. But it's a national treasure. It's on our money. Without the the Canada arm too, which is on space station, we wouldn't have been able to put the space station together. So it literally had to piece all the different components Whoa. of space station together. So it being on money is like well earned. Oh right? yes, yeah. yeah. It's something to be very, very proud of. You asked about water, and so we do ship some water onto space station, but then we also do a lot of recycling. So all the water that's on space station will get collected and recycled. There's systems up there that that will collect urine and oh water. urine, yeah. So that will become your water for the coffee. Wow. This is Kona P. <laughs> Where does the number two go? Not recycled, right? I think it just space goes debris? out into space. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Wow. So the environmental control system will collect all the condensate. So you know when you breathe, oh you also breathe. Oh my gosh, it's in the air? Maybe one day our houses will all do that too. That's one of the reasons that we have Space Station is to sort of figure out how we're going to like, explore further on. Long story short, the future involves drinking your own pee. So David St. Jack's a Canadian uh, astronaut, him, <laughs> who is going to space on social media. We're gonna put all the description below because he's gonna be documenting all about his preparation of going mm, to space. All the scenes. interesting things that we were just sort of starting to tackle here, he will be talking about like the idiosyncrasies of going to space. So we'll put all the descriptions there. You can follow along. I know we will. All right. Well, that was our taste I'm test of space food. I'm very satiated. Want to say thank you so much, Natalie, for coming so cool. and to the Canadian Space Agency for allowing us to chow down on all your foods to do. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure. Thanks for watching. This is so cool. Going to space is obviously something that we should all be thinking about yeah. to gain perspective. And yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll see thanks. you next week for a new video. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.